So what is biochar? Well, here's one of those rude slides with a little tiny writing, and it's very complex, and it's a, a quite a long and very specific definition about biochar. But you don't have to read it, because I'm going to translate it for you. What it simply means is that charcoal made from plant material or waste in a high temperature ovens with limited oxygen uh, when you put that the uh, resultant char in the soil, it will sequester carbon for thousands of years, and it's carbon negative because it holds carbon that would otherwise remain in the active carbon cycle. So biochar is taking the material that's already in biomass, the carbon that's already in biomass, and grabbing a hold of it, and then when you put it in the soil, it's very recalcitrant. I had to look that up the first time I heard it. It means it doesn't fall apart. Uh, um, and doesn't decay over time, um, or at least so that we'd notice. Um, and the other exciting thing about biochar is that it attracts and holds uh, nutrients in water. It makes them more bioavailable to plants, and that means we use less fertilizers, and that's over time. That, that's, that's not just this year, and then you put more biochar, and you, then you, protect, and then you um, hold those fertilizers that you put on this year, and then you put it on again. No, you don't keep applying biochar to soil, although there have been studies that have shown up to 60 tons per acre of biochar can be applied before you see deleterious effects. So do not try that at home. That's a lot of biomass or biochar. But, um, and one of the other things that biochar does, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to all of this, but, but it also reduces the off-gassing of greenhouse gases, CO2, nitrous oxide from soils. That's a huge benefit. Okay, biochar, what does it look like? Yep, it's just charcoal. We, call, we add the bio when we stick it in the soil, but it's really, really porous. And this is the exciting thing about it. Do you know in a, in a, 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 a cubic centimeter of biochar, there are thousands of square yards of surface area. And that's pretty exciting. Oh, how is biochar made? Well, years ago, charcoal, this is charcoal making. It is messy, it is dirty, and it is really smoky. But we don't make it that way anymore. We use pyrolysis, and these are pyrolysis ovens. This is a whole tree a pyrolysizer, which is pretty wild. That's in New Zealand. Um, and this a friend of mine made up in, in, uh, in Calgary, and I have not been to visit that one yet. So um, that's pyrolysis. But what, what is pyrolysis? It's a way to thermally convert biomass without oxygen. The emissions are captured, and you get byproducts from it, liquids, syngas, Charcoal. Now, what's the difference between combustion? Combustion is when you put the flame right to the biomass. You burn the material, and in the presence of oxygen, create a lot of heat, obviously, but you get ash. Uh, is really what uh, is the end result, and gases that, that escape off into the atmosphere. So, the products of pyrolysis. Very specifically, what do we get out of it? Well. The fun thing is, is that you don't need different equipment to get these different products. You can get these different products from one piece of equipment, but it depends on how you adjust the temperature and the speed at which the, the material is subjected to the heat. If you go fast, like a gasification, oh, there's a big clue there, gas, um, syngas which is, can be a substitute pr for propane. It doesn't have as many BTUs as natural gas does, but it, it is a suitable substitute for propane. You get very little char um, out of a, a, a syngas emphasis because it goes at a very high temperature, so that there's very little uh, char left. In mid-range temperature, you can focus on that, and you'll, you can get bio oil. You can get a lot of bio oil out of, out of um, biomass. It's really pretty amazing. And it's, it, you can sell that, and there is an active market right now for it. It's bunker fuel. It's a very crude kind of oil, uh, very heavy oil. It's used in manufacturing, like um, a cement plants use a lot of bunker fuel. And it is a precursor to biodiesel, but right now it is not worth the energy return on energy invested um, to, make, to take that extra step to refine it to, bio to a, a biodiesel product. Um, so we don't recommend that. The biochar, soil amendment, carbon sequestration, and carbon credits, if, if uh, any of our leaders ever 
become more aware that a carbon market of some nature would be very, very beneficial and very helpful not only to the economy but to our, our natural economy, um, then we would have a, another, another uh, viable e economic benefit from biochar. Also heat, space heating, steam production, producing electricity. <coughs> And this unit right here that, that is behind us is, uh, is used for production of, of electricity and it's net metered back into the grid. And in Alberta, it's a, that's a very profitable thing to do. We find in the United States and particularly in Montana, there are a lot of barriers to net metering. So we recommend the, that if you're making um, biochar on your own, that, that you look for a, an on-site use for the energy that you're creating rather than trying to stick it back into the net and, and uh, into the grid and then bring it back. Um, so, and very, very low emissions. Um, actually, when, when pyrolysis units are operating, you don't see any smoke, you don't see anything coming out of them at all. 